I got a great lesson for you. We've been doing new creation realities. Today, we're going to talk about the weapons of our warfare. The weapons of our warfare. Can you say amen? And also, one of the foxes that I talked about, I want to share with you. This is a quite common problem for human beings. Everyone say, human beings need Jesus. All of us. Amen. So, for example, I have to paint an example. Let's say you think, I think, and act in a certain way. You think that I am mad at you, so you respond to me what you think I'm doing. Completely not right. Completely demonic. You have no business thinking how I am about you. You have every reason to think about how you are regarding me. Someone say amen. So what happens to the enemy? He likes to get us to think somebody's doing something. And then he tries to confirm it by what they do. So we think they're this way when really they're not really that way. We just think they're that way. So we react to the way we think they are instead of the way God wants us to. We've missed it. And I'm talking to the whole body of Christ worldwide. That particular trick Satan uses too much. For example, I always think you think well of me. You should be always thinking that I think well of you. To think anything different comes from who? Didn't Jesus say, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay? Anything more than that conversation can, can lead to problems. I changed a little bit. Coming from the evil one. So listen, when you give your word, keep your word. Okay? Otherwise, just say, well, you know, I've got to pray about that. See if I can do that. Say it like that. Say amen. But hey, if I tell you I'm going to have lunch with you next week and completely forget about you, I can set myself up for personally for feeling guilty because I forgot. And never, you, you see what I'm saying? So God wants us to be wise as serpents and gentle as... So our lesson for today is the weapons of our warfare. If we can turn and look at our scripture, it'd be great. This is Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2 and 9 through 13. Now let me explain. This is what the psalmist and the prophet Isaiah, hello, this is what the psalmist, and then later on the prophet Isaiah says, no weapon formed against you will prosper, are looking into the future in the spirit. Prophets see in the future in the spirit because God allows them to. And he proclaims the walk of a believer. This, Psalms 91, is a walk of a believer in Christ. Hello. This isn't the wishes of a believer. People read Psalms 91 as if it's a, a promise and a wish. It's not a promise and a wish. This is how you walk in Christ. This is the result that you walk in Christ. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. This is who we walk in Christ. The trouble is, it's not being taught that way. It's being taught that you can hope and believe for God to do that with you. Who lives in you? That's God's walk. You're following him. You're not leading God around. He's leading you around. Say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope you are. <laughs> All right. He who dwells in the secret place. We found out the secret place is meeting God in the spirit. Amen. To pray, Father, in Jesus' name. That's the secret place. Of the most high shall abide. Everyone say, live and dwell. The word abide means to live and, up and dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Wow. Take a minute, take a big, deep breath, say, that's me. 
Two says, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge. What is a refuge? He's a sanctuary. Folks, you came into a sanctuary. Your life is dwelling in God, surrounded by a hedge, in sanctuary, in the spirit. That is, if you stay out of the flesh. And I will say, the Lord is my refuge, my fortress. What's a fortress? Keeps you from the enemy. Hello? My God in him will I trust. Because, verse 9, you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. Some would say amen. Nor any plague come near to your dwelling. Some would say amen. amen. For we shall keep, give his angels charge over you to keep you lest you dash your foot against a stone. So, if you think about it, I'm trying to give you a picture because we're talking about the weapons of our warfare. There are more angels in this building, in this room, than there are people. You have at least two angels, and they're all so powerful they could take care of 10,000 human beings with just a swipe. So, it gives us a description. What? I know. Gives us a description that we are well taken care of if we walk with Christ. Now, there is a lot of people, and please don't get me wrong, that are Christians that love the Lord, but they're not walking with Christ. They're not sinning either. They're just walking in themselves. They're walking in the natural. And so they don't really see a lot of these things that are put in the scripture. So they can't hope for them. They can't believe for them. If nobody told you that the prison cell was open, it just looks like it's shut. And to get up off that bed and stop feeling sorry for yourself and walk out of there, how would you know to do that? You wouldn't. The rest of the scripture says, In their hands I shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion... Satan walks about as a roaring lion. And the cobra, isn't he called a serpent? A cobra is a vipinous snake. snake. And the young lion and the serpent, shall tra you shall trample under your feet. Now, that's telling you that if you want... Now, I want you to just get the simplicity. Remember, we have a simple gospel. All we need to do is trust God, and he puts us in these places. He puts us in these positions. You don't do them. These are not something you do. You decide you want it done, and you ask God to do it. And then you walk in that reality because it's yours. Someone say amen. All right, so let me read my paragraph to you. Greetings to you, church. Today we're going to look at the weapons of our warfare. They're mighty through God, through God. See, if you pass through the door then you're passing through the door. Through God means that you pass through Christ. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, I lay hands on the sick in Jesus. You're passing through Christ. In other words, he's out in front. You are moving with him. Say amen. The born-again believer is a supernatural powerhouse if he knows his equipment and what God has given him. Then we have to be humble enough to listen to the instructions so God can teach us how to use the equipment. Someone say, oh, me. Because, you know, sometimes going to church, they don't teach about our weapons. They don't teach how to fight properly. In fact, you go to you go to church and they'll and I'm not again, please, this is not a put down. They'll teach you how to be a good Christian. But they don't teach you about how to whack the enemy and back him off your life. Hello? They might not know how to do that. So we see lots of pastors coming and lots of pastors going, people following God and then falling away. I think Christianity is a little stronger than that. Can you say amen? It's a little more than up and down and roller coaster rides. So let's get into this and let's find out what are the weapons of our warfare. Now remember, we gave this to you. It says, truly a good Christian who walks out wants success in his walk with Christ. This is what we need to do. 
Number one, we need to start out each day by presenting ourselves before God, asking him to crucify our flesh and anoint us for the day and for the fruit of the day. Can you say amen? And then during the day, be careful to listen and to obey the little things he tells you to do. The little things, you see, God might tell you, say, today I want you to do this. Okay, and you just do it. You see, what God is doing with us is he's seeing if we're going to be obedient so he can ask us to do more. And when we do it for him, it's him really that's doing it in us. Can you say amen? And the, little, the more little things that we obey, the more that they grow, and the more we're able to develop, and the more we're able to influence. Remember, we were given God's power, influence, and his dominion in his kingdom. Can you say amen? So we need to learn and let the Holy Spirit guide us into those areas. Again, last week and the week before, I talked about how Christians can grow up lopsided. They can be developed in love, but can't, can't stand others. I mean, if you hate children, don't go in and be in the nursery. Hello. And so God wants us to develop spiritually and in our, our stability, in our, in our character, in our ability to endure. Say amen. And he wants us to grow complete. Complete. He doesn't want you to have a big hole in your walk. Can you say amen? And usually the enemy will finally find that hole if we don't fill it. So we fill all odd God's holes by presenting ourselves to the Lord. All right, so listen during the day. Be careful to obey. And then practice. Practice loving others. Okay, here we're going to cover these four things. If you're taking notes, number one, the weapons of, the war, of our warfare. We're going to describe them. Two, evaluate what you have as a believer. Three, from our spirit, we release God, not from our head or our flesh. We learn to bring God out of our gut, out of our core. Say amen. It means you slow down and you project. And then fourthly, speak the word, release God's power, and let the weapons do the fighting. You see, the weapons are God. Can God think for himself? He just needs you to pray, ask for invitation, then release the weaponry, and let God do the work. You think about that. Who's confronting the devil then? You or God? Yeah, because you're projecting him to confront the devil. He says, I am your weapon. I am the armor. I am the name. I am the power. Use it. Stop threatening the enemy with your life. It's a big joke. Don't get mad at me. It isn't really. But if it's just our life, we're going to, hey, Satan, I come to you in the name of Carrie. Remember, sons of Shiva in Acts chapter, in the book of Acts, they were seven sons of Shiva. They heard Paul could cast out devils. There was a lot of devils around. And they heard Jesus cast out devils. So they were going to cast out devils in Jesus' name whom Paul preaches. Did they know God? No. Did they believe in God? Not necessarily, but they wanted the devils to go. And it says when they confronted the enemy, the enemy says, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And then jumped on him and beat seven guys up, stripped them, and shoved them out in the street naked. Now, if you're going to deal with the devil, you've got to sick God on him. I come to you in the name of Carrie. You see. So make sure you are silhouetted behind God. And that you, when you speak, project God. And then God will do the work. Wow. That means you don't have to get all upset. God's battling and fighting for you. 
And your, your mind's saying, well, you don't see anything. You don't see anything. You prayed and asked God, you don't see anything. And shut up. I don't need to see anything. I asked God. You see, that's how our mind works. My mind sometimes just goes off. Let me just tell you, Saturday, yesterday, my wife and I got up under such an attack. We've never experienced an attack like that. I said, Lord, where's this coming from? I'm like, did I grieve you? And if you all know, I sent out, Linda and I sent out a little thing that was going on in Olympia on Friday night. They just launched a whole bunch of spirits. In, in Olympia, in the capital. Those spirits are flying around looking for some silly human being to open up their heart to you. And so next thing you know, I'm, we're being oppressed. I'm going, my gosh, where's this coming from? You can tell when the enemy's around. So we just kept quiet. We searched what we needed to search, didn't we? And then finally God lifted it. Sometimes just don't panic if you sense something around you. Just hold fast to the word. Say amen. amen. You can feel when the enemy's around. Well, how did he get anywhere near you? I don't know. But I don't care. He's gone. You see. And so there are things that happen that you need explanation. Thank God you got a, someone here, Linda and I, who've been through a lot that want to help you in your days to come to show you that these things happen. There's no big deal about it. But we were surprised. Where were there? That was pretty weird. But they had dislodged all these demonic spirits, and they went to charge all the churches in the area that are a threat. And God told us that wasn't anything we did, anything anyone else did. It was the spirit, the devils are very nervous. People are starting to pray. People are starting to preach the word. They're starting to get aggressive. They're starting to be on fire. They're starting not to take the back seat. They're starting to take the front seat. Can you say amen? Next to Jesus. It's not time for us to be quiet. It's time for us to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Carnal means ruled by the natural man. Everyone say carnal. Ruled by the natural man. So the weapons of God's warfare, of our warfare, are spiritual and not natural. Can you say amen? We don't shoot the enemy with a gun. We don't cure the enemy cancer with a pill. You cast it out. You don't charge the enemy in the name of yourself. You come against what the enemy is trying to do, and you put him in his place in the name of Jesus, and you tell him to move out of the way, for the king of glory is here. Who is the king of glory? The one you brought in your heart. Say amen. So, again, the Bible warns us not to think more highly of ourselves, but to think soberly so that God has dealt to each one what we need to overcome. Can you say amen? All right. So, in the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war, fight, struggle according to the flesh. Someone say amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not natural or carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of what? Okay, who had this planet in the Old Testament? Satan did. Jesus didn't come and get it back until the New Testament. Remember? That's the reason he was born. They might destroy the works of the enemy, die, rise again, purchase the planet, purchase the human beings back. And then says, as many as you choose to receive me, then God the Father will save you. But I bought all the human race. Jesus bought all the human race. Purchased them, freed them. Now, whether or not we accept that is up to each individual choice. Say amen. We pray, and that's why we share Jesus. All right. So Satan had this planet. 
He had the planet and he blinded the minds. So we go to he, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, look at verse 12 through 14. So Satan has strongholds in this planet. By the way, I don't know if you remember, but I did pick a clip for you to watch at noon about the flood, free flood history of this planet. I hope you, it's only about 12 minutes long. I hope you will enjoy it with us, okay? But see, Satan dug in. He wanted the planet. Don't ever forget that. He still thinks he's going to get it. Isn't that stupid? After Jesus stripped him, after Jesus took all of his spiritual power from him, the only thing Satan can do is threaten, tempt, deceive. And he can only do it to the Christian that is doing their own thing and not God's thing. Every man's tempted when he's drawn away of his own lusts. Don't be drawn away. There's nothing out there. I said there's nothing really out there compared to what we're going. And folks, you know, I, I have people tell me all the time, well, Carrie, I, I, you know, I know that there's wonderful things in heaven. God's got all that, but I need some things now. So let me quote this for you. People say there's pie in the sky in the by and by, but you have steak on your plate while you wait. How do you do that? By meeting with God, having God provide for you. Can you say amen? He promised, I will set a table for you in the midst of your enemy. Come and eat. But what do we do? We crawl up to the table and say, we're so unworthy. No, no, no. Are you getting anything out of this this morning? So Ephesians again says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. In other words, somebody in the flesh might have said something to you, but you don't come against them or argue with them. It's the spirit behind them. Hello? Does it mean we don't, we don't try to correct and try? Oh, yeah, we do. But just remember, if somebody's doing something awful, bind the spirit that's driving them to do it. Can you say amen? Because they don't know. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because that's what Satan wants us to do. Because he feeds on us fighting with each other. He feeds on wars and rumors of wars. He feeds on famine, past pestilence, all the struggle. And he, he's made it all. And then he feeds off it like it's a meal. He wants to move you out of peace and out of grace and put you into torment so he could suck the life right out of you. Everyone, say, Satan, you are bound from me. In Jesus' name. Amen. So when you get up, say, Lord, I present my body, crucify my flesh, and, and I rebuke the enemy. See, we have a free walk. We have a liberated walk in Christ. All right. <clears throat> so it goes on. Therefore, take up the whole armor. What are we to do? Didn't say take up one or two pieces. Take up the whole armor of God, which you may be able to stand or withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand what? See, everybody doesn't understand the standpoint. You see, you don't wave your hands or pop, pop, punch the devil. You don't have to be screaming and shouting. You just stand in Christ and say, God, get him in Jesus' name. Now, that's hard to do, especially when things are going on around you where you feel like you want to just, you know, rebuke and rail. That's what Lynn and I did yesterday. We just were quiet, and we just released God. And says, Lord, you clean whatever that is up, bind it all up in Jesus' name, and he did. Do you believe it when you ask God to do something that he's going to do it? Amen. Well, of course. In that in mind, put you on the whole armor of God. You go in, you meet with God, and he puts the armor on you. Do you even think you can handle spiritual armor you can't even see? 
with the physical man? I'm straightening out my helmet, Linda. <laughs> Come on now. Are, you're not mad at me, are you? <laughs> okay. I wasn't talking to Linda. I was talking to someone else. <laughs> Amen. So we wear God's armor. Amen. Now, here's another thing that we do as Christians. I teach in series. I teach precept upon precept upon precept, bringing you to a place of being able to experience all of this. Now, if you want me to just start preaching and teaching like everybody else, then I can do that too. Let me give you three steps. Do this. Bless you. Go home and be good. You know? No. We're in a war. We're in a war for your family's souls your children's souls, for your mother and dad if they're still in life. We're in war to rescue the souls of the lost. That's why we have armor, because Satan doesn't want to give them up. Do you think Satan wanted to give you up? No way. So we need to have solid teaching on what to do and how to do it, and then experience the results that he's promised. Point one, the, weapon God, the weapons God gave us are spiritual, and they need to be handed, sp handled spiritually. That's from the core of your being. And you need to ask God to teach you how to handle the gifts and the flow in the spirit. Say amen. He'll teach you. He will. Everyone. There's not one he'll leave out if you ask him. Two, we wrestle not against human beings, flesh and blood. Hello. That means that there are spirits behind people. Now, when a child gets old enough to know right from wrong, there's spirits to go into operation. Remember, God is passive aggressive and Satan is very aggressive. So he'll push and he'll shove and he'll try to convince and God waits for us to come to him. He's a gentleman. He's like a dove. We have to ask him because the accuser, Satan, says, Lord, Adam and Eve gave their hearts to me. I can stay here and tempt all your people if they're going to live for everything else and not live for you. And God said, yeah, you'll stay here until your time is done. So he'll be in this planet tempting Christians and tempting people. Now, everybody has an ability to resist the enemy. Even when I wasn't saved, I was up on the, on the uh, space needle before they had all the protective coatings and all they had was a rail. And I heard a voice so loud, and I'm scared of height, or I, I don't like to say it that way. My knees knock when I'm up high. And I'm, I hear a voice so loud. This is before I'm saved. Jump off the building. Now, who do you think that was? Jump! Well, I absolutely frightened even close to the edge. And I said, no. That's how quickly you can resist him. He's been stripped, but we, he doesn't want us to know that. But thank God you and I have Jesus in our heart. We have God in our heart. Can you say amen? So we don't have to resist him on our own. We resist him in the Lord. Amen. And the battle that we fight is releasing God to fight it. Amen. You got a sword of the spirit. You got a helmet of salvation. You got a breastplate of righteousness. Feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your truth belted or suspended. Amen? Keep your pants up. Keep Jesus up in your life. You are so blessed, aren't you? Amen. Okay, now, one more point underneath that first one. God lives in our spirit man, not in our head, not in our flesh. He lives in our spirit man. We must put his weaponry in his hands when we use them and place him first. Can you say amen? Once he's placed first, he operates the equipment. We just 
Watch him operate. You asked, you believed, and watch him operate. Can you say amen? And then to engage the enemy in the natural is folly. Don't do it. We are to deal with him by the spirit and the word of God. Say amen. Let's go to point two. Point two is, what do we have as a believer? What are some of the things we have? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do abundantly and exceedingly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations can you say amen? Forever and ever, amen. Then down to Ephesians chapter 1, 3 and 4. says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, is that past tense, blessed us with every spiritual blessing where? In, in the higher spiritual realm, in heavenly places. In Christ, just as he chose us before him, or excuse me, chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be what? Holy, set apart for him, and blameless before him in love. Say amen. And that kind of love is his love. We're before him in his love. He loves us so much that he gave his son. All right, so let's look at that. What are some of the things, Carrie, that we have? Well, number one. We have prayer. How did you get saved? You believed in your heart and you prayed, say, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sin. You were saved. Two, we have the blood of Jesus. Then you were cleansed with the blood of Jesus. It separates you from the devil and separates you from the world. Can you say amen? Three, we are forgiven of our sins. Not just some sins, past, present, and future. Number four, we're translated out of darkness into light. So therefore, we're children of God, not sinners saved by grace. So God deals with us as children, not as some human being. Another one is, we have the name of Jesus. When you speak the name of Jesus, speak it out of your core. When you speak it out of your core, it has all the power that Jesus has in that name at once. So you say, Father, in Jesus' name, all heaven stands, all the angels are ready, just like that. And then we open our mouth and insert foot. Oh, God, I don't know why Christy's mad at me. I used your name. You have to get this sermon. I don't know why Sherry's frustrated. And that's what we go into the throne with? Everyone say, not me. Okay, what else do we have, Pastor Kerry? Well, we have God living in us. We have God's angels. We have the armor of God, which is light in Jesus Christ. We have the word of God. We have the everlasting covenant that never can be broken. It's only up to us having our faith in it that we get the results of it. It isn't anything we earned. It's given to us by grace. Can you say amen? So all of that we have. What does the devil have? Well, don't be loosely. He does have something. He, he worked hard in putting in human beings little lacings of doubt and unscriptural things. This is why we have to renew our mind and cleanse that out of there, because they will pop up once in a while. They have the ability, if you dwell on them, to change your mood. And if you had a happy mood and suddenly your mood changed, the devil's too close, get rid of him. If your mood automatically changes and you were happy and then all of a sudden you're different, the enemy's around. Find him, rebuke him, and put him in his place. Amen. Amen. So, folks, 
The enemy only has the ability to make you think that this is happening. So yesterday, Lynn and I, we could feel his presence. We could feel what was going on. And first, first thing he told us that my mind started to do is try to figure out what was going on. And God says, don't you dare. You trust me and just thank me. And then a little later on, he lifted it right off. Sometimes it's trying to figure it out where we get into problems. Say, oh me. Because sometimes it's beyond your understanding about things. So thank God we have God who's always alert, never asleep, always watching out for his children. Say amen. And because you walk with him, you walk in him, he's in you, you are in him, and you're seated in heavenly places. All these things are yours. Don't lose sight of them. Don't forget that you were forgiven of your past sins and you've been translated into light. Say amen. Our third point is from our spirit man, we release the weapons. Not from our head. Not from our head, from our spirit man. God in his fullness lives in your spirit. Say amen. Say God in his fullness lives in my spirit. Not in my head. Not in my flesh. He lives in my spirit. So when we speak the word or when we pray, pray from the inside out. For example, if I'm praying off the top of my head, oh, Father, bless Sherry, bless Sherry, bless BJ. Oh, thank you, Lord. Do you think there's any power or substance in that? No, but God hears it. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to belittle anybody, but he does hear it. The trouble is we've got to bring spirit out in it. You're a spirit being with God in your spirit. So the weaponry operates in the hand of Jesus out of your spirit. Say amen. It's exciting. Tremendously exciting. So let me read on. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even division of soul and spirit between your thinking and your heart, your core, and is a and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of what you intend with your heart and what you talk yourself out with your head. How many know your head can can get out of sorts sometimes? Yes. But in your spirit, it can't. Who lives in your, your spirit, man? Has God ever made a mistake? So there you go. Let what's here go up into the eyes of your understanding so that you act in God, through God. Say amen. All right, so follow me here. It's divides, okay? Ephesians chapter 5, 8 through 10 says, For you were once darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk, beat a trail, make it a habit. That's what the word walk means. It's parape uh, parapeteo, which means um, to walk or build a habit. So build a habit. Can you say amen? Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. Everything you do should be good. Righteousness, being right before God. And truth, because of truth wins out. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. How many here, when you first got saved, you found out a few things God accepted, a couple other things he didn't? Anybody besides me? Sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I had all my rock and roll albums. You know, my 33 LPs, stack of them like this, ACDC and all that. Now, most of them I never listened to. I was a drummer, so I listened for beats, syncopations and beats and stuff. I don't necessarily key into the words. So a lot of those groups had good drummers, and so I liked them, you know. But God says, e -e -e -e. there's stuff in those albums I don't need you to be hearing. Get rid of them. And one day God will tell you to start make, moving on some areas and don't accept everything that comes your way. You might have to throw that whiskey bottle out of your house. Hello? It might come down to the... Why? Because who do you belong to? And if God sees something later on might be a stumbling block, couldn't he be able to say to you, I want you to really deal with this and let's get this done? Hello? Are you with me? 
Are you with me? More than anything, I love you and I care for you. Linda and I do not want anything to happen to you. We want you to really take serious your Christianity and realize that people's eyes are on you. And they're basing their life on what they see you do or say. Well, that's pretty sobering. Can you say amen? All right. Look at what this says. It says, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. This is Ephesians 5, 13 and 14. And whoever makes manifest is light. Who lives in you? God. And God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. What is he saying? Your human flesh is dead to God. Christians are walking in the physical realm, but being motivated by the physical realm rather than by their heart. Can you say amen? And so it's called a zombie. There are Christians walking around, going through things, going through emotions, but it's like their heart is not in it. Hello? That's called a dead work. We need to repent from dead works because they have no God in them. So how can I get God in? You can take a shower in God. For heaven's sake, bring God in everything you do. You can go clean houses in God. You can go help some sickly person in God. Everything you do is to be in God so that you're shielded and protected. Can you say amen? Amen. Well, what about you yesterday? See, the devil's, I can hear him saying that. I was shielded and protected. I just could feel the ugliness of the devil. Just because you can feel the ugliness of the devil doesn't mean it's on you. I ask God, is that on us? We do something? He says, not at all. He says, this is how ignorant our churches have been. To think that they can just whamby pamby boo 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 and then that, that there's some responsibility we need. Amen. So I won't I won't uh, go into that too much. Amen. From our spirit man we release the weapons. Can you say amen? All right. For example, the key is to speak the word from our spirit man. The word and Jesus are the same. So we meet with God. He puts in our heart the equipment that he uses as we speak the word. Can you say amen? Two, we use the word to release our weaponry in Christ. Three, we need to know that these weapons are exactly what Satan doesn't want us to use. Because the weapons are Christ. The sword of the Spirit is Christ. The, the helmet of salvation is Christ. The breastplate of our righteousness is Christ. Our belt suspenders is Christ. Amen. Our shield is Christ. Our feet shod with Christ. Very good. Now, did you put Christ on you? No, you asked Christ to come in you. God the Father puts Christ on you. All right, look at me. Everyone say, we love Pastor Kerry. I probably can be annoying sometimes, and I don't mean to be, okay? All right. So we speak the word, and God's power goes into operation. Amen? So let me give you this scripture. This is John 14, 12 and through 14. You know the scripture. This is Jesus speaking. Most assuredly, he says, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, will he do also in greater works than these shall he do? Because I go to the Father. Because I go to the Father, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's going to put God in your heart. God in your heart's going to do the fighting for you because Jesus, over 2,000 years ago, already beat the tar out of the devil, reduced him to nothing, And now our job is to follow Christ out of this planet. Can you say amen? If somebody 200 years ago died in Christ, they're off the planet. If somebody 100 years ago died in Christ, they're off the planet. They're not held in bondage. Before the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, no person ever left the planet. They were held captive and prisoners here. 
But thank God Jesus was the firstborn from among the dead so that you and I may follow him. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you will be also. Are you looking forward to that? Amen. Amen. So let's go to our final point. Ephesians chapter 6 now. I got a couple of props that I kind of put together, and I'm going to probably need the, the lights in the congregation to be off <coughs> so you can see the effect of it. And I, I want you to just kind of use your imagination with me as I use those little props. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> So how many here know that you have the God of light in you? You're covered with the armor of light. The Lord Jesus Christ silhouettes you. You're wearing God's underwear, the robes of righteousness. Then the armor comes on, the armor of light. Then Christ comes down. So the weapons that we use come out of our spirit man, our core man. Can you say amen? The helmet of salvation is the mind of Christ. The belt of truth is the word of God, speaking the truth in love. Amen. The breastplate of righteousness is God's righteousness. But what I come to do is to show you an illustration what the sword and the spirit is. The word of God. When you speak the word, it's cutting to the devil. It's healing to the saint. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, Satan's cut right there. Lord, he's been coming in and keeping my child from going to church. In Jesus' name, I take authority over you. It's the sword of light. Can we have the lights, please? But see, in the New Testament... It's just not the Word of God, because the Word and Jesus are light. I'm not going to try to shine it in your eyes. But if it was pitch black, and you wanted to put a spotlight on the devil, you understand? Satan hides in the darkness. He hides in the ignorance. But God says, receive my Word, and I will give you light. That light penetrates into darkness, and the darkness cannot overwhelm it. But you see, as we walk on with the Lord, the light gets brighter. And it begins to spread out and covers more area. This light is for your family, for them to see the way, for them to know there's a city set on a hill. They can't be hid. Can you say amen? And then this light also can be focused. It can be focused into a laser. As soon as I figure out how to turn it on. Oh. I got to remove the little doohickey. Now, this is what you call a laser. I'm not going to get in here. Any of this one's so powerful, you don't dare shine at an airplane. But this little laser is light-focused. This is what Satan hates. The Christian that knows how to use the Word of God to focus the light, to cut cancers out of people, to cut Satan's working out of people, to begin to do the work... And it caused the healing. Do you know that a laser, not only can it cut, but it also seals once it's cut. And God cuts out our cancers, out our sin, and then he seals us from those things. Can you say amen? So God wants us to be able to take the word of God and focus like a laser. I hope I don't hit any of you guys. I'm not trying to do any of that. So how's your light? How focused are you? 
Say amen. amen. So your prayer is, Father, teach me how to focus your light, how to get the things done that I need to get done, so I have enough time to enjoy my future marriage and good things. Say amen. 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 Now, does anybody here have any questions? So you don't have a beat up old sword anymore. You have a lightsaber. And you can turn that light on anytime you want. But don't be like a lot of Christians. All they do is talk about what's wrong instead of bringing the light. Can you say amen? Well, Lord, bless you, keep you, watch over you. Uh, his, his angels take charge over you. Lord, bless everyone here, their families, their children. Lord, bless, the, bless their prayers. Help them, Lord, to realize and focus that Satan looks at their face. Let our face shine the light. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, any questions?